Well, I can send it. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. My name is Louise, Louise and uh, I'm just very briefly going to introduce Etienne Balibar, who is our first keynote. He's a, the anniversary chair professor here at the Center for Research in Modern European Philosophy. He's also a visiting professor at Columbia University. Uh, we're lucky to have him here in the department for a conference such, such as this one, uh, because his work in many ways traverses the different um, sites and voices, uh, the different sites from which and the different voices with which uh, universalisms have been enunciated. Um, and these, this idea of, of different and multiple universalisms that might be in conflict with, conflict with each other uh, and that might be have a sort of defining force on global presence, I think really characterizes uh, a lot of what Etienne has interrogated. Specifically in, context, in the context of the conference here and the topic of religion, uh, he published some years ago in France uh, an essay titled Seculum uh, on culture, religion, and ideology, which largely took up uh, the differential and the delimitation between laicity, in English you would maybe call it <laughs> secularity, uh, as an intellectually identitarian position that's also weaponized and instrumentalized, uh, and uh, secularism, the idea of secularism in a cosmopolitan context. Uh, and this essay has been translated and expanded in Secularism and Cosmopolitanism, which came out, I think, last year. Last year or the year before. Yes. Uh, so, with those little works in the background, I'll let you take them. Thank you, Marius. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And if I move to the center, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 No? Yeah. Uh, I find this disposition extremely strange. <laughs> you know, this format in, in that door <laughs> doesn't have a possibility to uh, look at everybody uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the face. And, um, okay, the, I was lucky that there is a whiteboard here. So I put uh, the, the scheme, somebody already told me, but we know that, we've seen that before, you've done that several times. I said, yes, of course, it's always the same. <laughs> <laughs> so in a sense, everything's here, but I have to come. So thank you very much to uh, all of you, to um, my dear students, Austin, Enua, and Louis, for organizing this and inviting me to be the first speaker, which is an honor and, uh, and uh, a threat, not a threat, but <laughs> a perilous, uh, perilous situation. <laughs> I very much look forward to the continuation of the, of the conference, but I had to say something uh, uh, at the beginning. And um, thank you, Marie-Louise, for your words your generous introduction. Okay. So, uh, you give me 40 minutes, you said. Okay. You will cut me sharp wherever I have arrived. Yeah. In fact, what I'm going to uh, talk about or to present is not, uh, is not an argument. I wish I could. Uh, ever since I uh, was led to uh, jump, uh, that's already a long time ago, into disputes about secularism and uh, religion whatever that means, uh, in uh, my own country, that is France, which has its own specificities, as you know, in this uh, uh, respect, uh, very nicely uh, encapsulated by a portmanteau word that has been coined by, in fact, used by several uh, uh, um, uh, essayists, particularly uh, Edgar Morin, uh, which can be read in both uh, directions, capto laicite, and we, we live in, under the uh, uh, reign of capto laicite, this is something, uh, secularism that is Catholic and the Catholicism that is secularized. But of course there are uh, different, uh, uh, although partially overlapping, uh, conflictual situations as you recalled, uh, in which I was also uh, 
led to, to, to try and, and say something. And that uh, uh, led to the, the publication of several essays, uh, particularly the ones that are uh, connected in the book you record. But uh, you won't be surprised if I tell you that uh, not that I no longer believe anything what is in, the, in those uh, essays, but I'm uh, uh, permanently forced also because of discussions and, uh, and controversies to try and re-elaborate, uh, I would say, the framework within which such questions uh, can be discussed. And this is why I welcome the uh, invitation to uh, talk here. So the, I, I, I'll, I'll try and not be too long on, on, on my preliminaries because I, I think they're, f they're fairly obvious. But there are uh, essentially three uh, uh, things that I want to say. First, um, many of us, I think, and Austin already said uh, almost exactly that, uh, have a, a feeling that uh, uh, religion and therefore critique of religion, of course, in the most uh, 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 general and philosophical sense, uh, the understanding of uh, uh, the meaning of that category and uh, corresponding practices, and more generally, the uh, uh, necessity to engage with religious discourses, either from inside or from, uh, from outside, but I'll come back to that seems to be really the most uh, uh, urgent uh, uh, task in this uh, uh, moment. Of course, there are many other critiques, cultural critique, critique of political economy and capitalism and so on, which are uh, still and more than ever perhaps on the, on the agenda. But the, the question of religion uh, uh, comes to the fore not only because such phenomena or alleged phenomena as the return of the religion or the determining function that religious uh, 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 creeds and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and memberships uh, play in some of the most uh, violent uh, conflicts of today's uh, uh, world. And uh, perhaps, but I am sure we'll come to that uh, during the conference as well, uh, the fact that very uh, radical transformations in the uh, cultural and material ordering of the world in which we uh, uh, live seem to call, and this, uh, I say this in a very, in a very positive uh, manner, for something like a, uh, a renewal, uh, once again, it's not the first time, of uh, the religious uh, idea, let's put it like that, not the communist idea, but the religious I, 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 idea, and therefore once again put into question the age-old, typically Western idea that religion is something that belongs to the past, or that the, uh, the linear trajectory of our uh, history, uh, history of progressive modernization would be something like the famous disenchantment of the world. So you hear a lot of discourses uh, to the effect that, uh, in fact, what is both possible, perhaps even necessary, and uh, 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 to, be, uh, to be hoped for is a re-enchantment of the world. And, and therefore, inevitably, the question becomes whether this, what kind of relationship this would have with uh, a religion. But of course you also hear a kind of uh, uh, renewed, uh, uh, not only uh, 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 secular, but um, uh, uh, positivist and materialist critique, which says, wait a minute, this is extremely dangerous language. You are uh, uh, um, accepting at face value without uh, uh, criticism the most uh, uh, Unreflexive uh, uh, common ideas of the of the of the of the, of the time, and in a sense, you are accepting uh, uh, something that is a diversion with respect to the, uh, 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 in fact, serious and material issues of the time. Something that you hear from good old Marxists, of course, but not only, but not uh, 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 only. So. Uh, um, uh, I, I believe that we're all convinced that such uh, uh, disputes will remain extremely muddy and confused uh, as long as we do not try to clarify what we mean by religion and uh, in which sense this uh, 
uh, uh, can be uh, considered a stable uh, uh, notion. But here we come to a second difficulty, which is uh, also extremely obvious, and which I, I will uh, uh, summarize to begin with, with the uh, uh, using the uh, uh, formula that I'm sure many of you are uh, uh, familiar um, uh, 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 with, uh, invented by uh, English uh, Oxford uh, philosopher in the uh, 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 50s. What's his name? I have a terrible lack of memory. It will come back. Uh, namely, that religion is typically an essentially contested concept. So of course, there are many others, uh, uh, democracy, etc. But religion, in particular, is an essentially contested concept because the fact that people disagree on what has to be understood by uh, the category religion or the term religion, not only uh, when they try to uh, propose sociological or uh, um, uh, hermeneutic uh, um, uh, clarification about uh, uh, its sources and origins, but about the very meaning and feed and range of application of the concept is not something that will be ever eliminated. The conflict is intrinsic to the very understanding of the category religion. So religion is a, is a, is a, is a, is a concept that is bound to become immediately split into antithetic uh, 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 meanings and understandings. And of course, uh, uh, and this leads immediately to, to, to the third point, uh, which is the fact that uh, um, you cannot, <coughs> you do not say that just from outside, and as if there existed a safe place outside the dispute about the very meaning of religion from which you could try with uh, conceptual and perhaps uh, historical uh, um, instruments as well to assess uh, uh, and uh, uh, describe, I would say, the internal conflicts affecting that concept. Because in fact, the religious language, and particularly the religious language with which we, and we here means the West, but the West is a very broad uh, uh, sphere. So it's already part of the dispute uh, where the West ends. Uh, does Islam belong to the West because the West would be defined essentially in terms of its monotheistic uh, uh, tradition? Or does Islam uh, represent the first uh, and most important, in some sense, uh, uh, antithetic figure or antagonistic uh, figure because the West is essentially to be defined in terms of imperial and colonial uh, uh, conquest of the world? And so on and so on. But in any case, uh, uh, however you, 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 you define it, what, what seems to be very typical is the fact that religion defines itself in terms, I would say, of uh, its opposition to an internal enemy. Uh, that is, there's always uh, 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 a good, authentic, like, or perfect, in some, in some cases, form of the uh, 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 religious which uh, uh, becomes uh, opposed to uh, another one which is lower, imperfect, uh, uh, um, uh, more uh, archaic in terms of uh, 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 evolution, or uh, uh, less uh, uh, demanding in terms of its relationship to truth. I will come to that. And this is called, of course, uh, superstition, uh, uh, and so on. So, um, we have to cope with the fact that uh, uh, the, the dualisms uh, uh, seem to be uh, inherent in the uh, uh, definition of religion, but they are uh, also immediately uh, uh, over-determined by this uh, uh, conflictual or uh, um, uh, contested situation itself. If I had time, I would uh, start here to give some examples, but I would just refer to two cases which I find very uh, interesting and very uh, 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 revealing. Uh, you can take them in any order. Because uh, they both have to do with discourses which uh, uh, object immediately that uh, you shouldn't use the category religion because it's always, it's always already including uh, um, uh, uh, cultural or political prejudices. 
And therefore, of course, that leads you to suggest that instead of religion, you should speak of something uh, uh, other when it comes to uh, identifying or, dis or describing the discourse, the institution uh, uh, where somebody else is located. Uh, so, uh, first example that comes to my mind is the example of uh, Catholic or Christian theologians. I'm thinking of the French Jean-Luc Marion is a good example uh, uh, for that who reject the use of the category of religion because they explain this is a Roman category which does not apply uh, to the Judeo-Christian, uh, uh, really mentioned in Islam, I have to, to admit, uh, um, um, uh, case, uh, because, uh, uh, in fact, this was co-opted, so to speak, by the Roman uh, uh, system of legal and political uh, 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 notions, and therefore it already immediately perverted, so to speak, what is essential to their own tradition, which is not religion, but revelation. Uh, now, of course, you would say revelation is one aspect, one fundamental aspect of the uh, uh, idea of religion with which we work. But uh, uh, precisely the question uh, uh, emerges here, whether uh, uh, the confusion should not be the first object of critique. And the second example that I can take, and this uh, takes me back to the uh, uh, disputes with which my book that you quoted uh, had to do comes from Talal Assad. Uh, um, I, I don't have to explain who Talal Assad is, and you know, of course, his work, which is increasingly important uh, in uh, all our discussions. Uh, now, um, um, uh, when I uh, wrote that book, I, I did my best to explain that we should not pure and simply identify the category of religion with the category of culture. While at the same time, uh, 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 of course, um, uh, uh, not uh, leaving aside or forgetting the fact that the two inevitably overlap or, or are uh, uh, both in theory and in practice uh, uh, combined with one uh, uh, another. And then I wanted to uh, give an example, and I put myself in a very dangerous uh, situation there. Uh, the, the replica came very strongly and very quickly. And I said there are different terminologies uh, uh, which uh, uh, make it possible, unfortunately, to uh, confuse or identify the religious and the cultural in general, and therefore make it impossible to uh, clarify what is at stake. And one of them is the uh, use of the category tradition. And that, for example, you find, uh, uh, especially in the work of Talal Assad, where Tal al-Assad says uh, Islam is not a religion, religion is, uh, uh, depends on the invention of a discipline called the history of religions, which was created, uh, so there are different, uh, it's a complicated history, of course. It begins at the end of the 18th century in France and, 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 and England, and becomes, uh, of course, a uh, uh, fully constituted discipline in uh, uh, Europe, uh, beginning perhaps with Germany, uh, uh, Therefore, in the framework, of course, of the great new paradigm of comparative philology that uh, uh, encompassed, or was supposed to encompass all uh, cultures of the world. So in any case, of course, uh, the use of the category of religion, and this time you do not refer only to the Roman legacy, uh, etc., but you rather uh, uh, build something like uh, Catholic, I'm tempted to say, or in any case, Christian, combination of the famous two sources uh, of uh, inspiration for our Western uh, uh, European culture, the Roman legacy uh, uh, on one side, or the Roman Greek legacy on one side, if it is, that is one, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the Jewish or Semitic that was invented at the uh, time legacy of the book and the revelation on the other side. And with that, of course, you uh, create a kind of model or ideal type of what a religion uh, uh, is in its uh, uh, perfect stage. And this is, of course, not separable from the uh, great evolutionist model that various philosophers, uh, uh, Hegel, Auguste Comte, and others, uh, and Schelling, uh, 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 explained each in its own way. But it essentially uh, 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 aims at explaining that there are primitive forms of religion, for them fetishistic or mythological, and there is a, a, a kind of a final or a, 
uh, uh, um, uh, teleological realization, which is monotheism, and especially monotheism in its uh, uh, Western form, and the rest has to find its place somewhere in the in the on the on the path in the in the, in the middle. So that's an imperial construction. And uh, 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 Talarasa's point is, if we want to talk about our own Islam, of what Islam is for us, we will never use that category which is meaningless for us. We have others that are not uh, translatable. But if I want to find a category in the uh, in English, in the Western uh, language, and in fact, he also uses references to some French uh, uh, um, uh, contemporary uh, uh, philosophers. Uh, Etc. This has to be described as a tradition, or more precisely, a discursive tradition. And again, as in the case of Marion, you will say that uh, why? What's the point in changing the, 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 the name? The point is precisely that religion is not a neutral uh, uh, category, but it's also that uh, uh, in the end you have to do with a, a kind of double bind uh, uh, situation. If you want to talk about it without pure and simply uh, uh, destroying or suppressing the object, uh, so, to, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, you need to use one or perhaps several of these uh, uh, categories, religion and its other names or its other uh, uh, um, uh, advers ad adversary, which are both external and internal. So you're never outside. Uh, uh, you're always located somewhere in some precisely discursive uh, 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 tradition. But you also uh, try, of course, to produce or create some sort of distanciation. So how much uh, time do we still have? Uh, about 15 minutes. About 15 minutes? 15 to 20. 15 to 20. OK, so let's uh, have it. So um, from this, I came to the idea that I should try, and this is why I put this, uh, this uh, um, drawing on the blackboard, on the whiteboard, excuse me. Uh, I hope you can see it from uh, uh, far away. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, uh, it should be in the center, but uh, that's a form of uh, post-modernity. <laughs> <laughs> the decentering of the object. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it was in my title with a slight difference. Huh? Uh, what occurred to me, or what I was, uh, what I thought I would experiment with, uh, really, it's a pure uh, uh, thought experiment. It doesn't uh, uh, provide any uh, uh, simple conclusion. Was um, the idea that. Uh, Whatever we call religion, we should uh, uh, try and uh, immediately avoid something that is heavily and profoundly rooted precisely in our uh, 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 Western tradition. And this probably has to do, in fact, of course, with the uh, institutional uh, legacy of the uh, dominant uh, uh, monotheism, namely the idea that there's something like a single principle a single essence of the religious as such. And uh, 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 of course, as we know, this can be looked for, and I will not enter that, into many uh, uh, different directions. Very often, it takes the form, again, of uh, uh, antithesis. For example, uh, uh, the essence of the religious is the uh, tension between the saint and the sacred, or or ideas uh, uh, like that. But in any case, there is a, a, a single, and perhaps a simple uh, uh, principle. Uh, and uh, um, uh, of course, it's not very easy, it seems to me, it's not very, very difficult, excuse me, not easy. It's not very difficult to identify here a kind of mimetic relationship to the discourse of uh, 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 monotheism, and particularly Christian monotheism, it uh, uh, said. In fact, uh, uh, I'm increasingly convinced that many discourses, however secular, sociological, historical they are, about uh, uh, religion, and especially they take the form of evolutionary uh, 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 descriptions, are in a sense a repetition of the essential formula at the uh, uh, beginning of John's uh, um, Gospel, en arche en o logos, at the beginning or 
at the command, because as you know, this uh, has the both meanings if you want to, to translate, uh, at the origin uh, was this uh, called the logos. And could be uh, could be varied or the symbolic or the sacred or, 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 or the revelation or whatever. But the important thing is the idea that there is one principle and then everything has to derive uh, from it. So perhaps there is a kind of there's a, a, a slightly naive, uh, slightly naive way of uh, reversing this uh, uh, representation. But it occurred to me that I could try and I could suggest that we uh, work with a different uh, schematism in mind, where uh, the identity uh, of the religious is highly problematic. In fact, it's the unknown, in a sense. Uh, um, and it's uh, highly problematic in, its, uh, in, two, in two correlative ways, uh, which uh, have to do perhaps also with the title irreligion and the critique of uh, uh, religion. It's, uh, it's problematic in the sense that we, are, uh, we, we do not know if the variations, uh, and therefore the object of, uh, uh, the main object of uh, uh, sociology and history of religion, which is comparison. And Weber, in my opinion, is the unsurpassable uh, example of that, is, uh, 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 contains something like uh, uh, core, if you like, or a nucleus of stable uh, 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 meaning, or whether the dispersion, in fact, is uh, 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 such that uh, 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 there is no real uh, uh, overlapping. But it's also um, uh, problematic in the sense that uh, the things, the practices, the discourses we want to talk about, uh, undoubtedly, from our own religious tradition, um, uh, this is uh, very clear, I hope to, 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 to show in a, in a minute, uh, ought to be described, understood, and uh, 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 developed as intrinsically religious, I would say, but we will never acquire the uh, um, certainty, much the contrary, that they are purely religious. Uh, that they, so, um, uh, this I try to apply in uh, uh, the following manner. I want to say something about uh, religious determinations of truth and determinations of the religion in terms of truth or the will to truth, as uh, uh, Nietzsche would say. I want to say or to sketch very quickly something about religion uh, in terms of authority, and I come back in a minute to the uh, uh, equivocity of this term. And finally, in my uh, initial proposition, I had said uh, that I wanted to say something about religious in terms of differences. I had in mind the idea of anthropological differences, such as sexuality, uh, uh, criminality, uh, uh, health, and, uh, and, and illness, and so on. But in the end, it occurred to me that I could pure and simply, and you see why I reached this point, that it was uh, Agamben's uh, distinction in mind, uh, uh, return to something more basic in a sense, which is the essential equivocity of the idea of life as a specific uh, 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 object for religious discourse. But at the same time, and I say it now because I'm sure that I will never uh, get to this point uh, this morning, I, uh, uh, so I, I, what I have in mind is first, Maybe we can understand uh, something of the religious, of the religious problem, or in the plural, the forms in which problems deemed religious uh, arise in our uh, uh, conjuncture, when you, we try and keep together or uh, simultaneously uh, uh, consider problems which have to do with our relation to truth, our relation to authority, and our relation to life, which in particular means our bodies and our uh, 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 forms of life. But first, we have no uh, uh, evidence, and perhaps you never have uh, any evidence of the fact that you com if you combine the three, as I suggested here, you get to something like a definition of the religious. You'll probably uh, 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 rather uh, uh, produce something like a, a deconstruction or, or a, a, a distribution uh, 
uh, an explosion of the category of the, the religious. And second, of course, the most important thing is that each time you probably have to admit that uh, uh, truth, of course, is crucially and even perhaps essentially in our representation the notion that derives from the religious discourse. But this is not to say that there are only religious discourses about truth. And the same is true, of course, uh, uh, for authority or for life. Okay. So since I have now uh, um, wasted much of my time, <laughs> quick preliminaries, let me say, try and say something, a few things about each of these three uh, uh, registers. So each of them is a word. So I, I, I chose to focus on one point. On the question of truth, I'm sure you, many of you will understand why, I mean, all of you. It, uh, it occurred to me that I pure and simply had to begin again with the famous passage in Nietzsche, uh, in, that is paragraph uh, 344 of uh, the Gaia Scienza, in which uh, um, uh, Nietzsche describes uh, uh, the religion of science. He, he doesn't uh, use the, the expression the religion of science, but he says we need to eventually admit that uh, uh, there is a belief that uh, scientific research activity, you no know, forms of knowledge and discourse, is based on a form of belief that it somehow denies, continuously uh, 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 denies, and this belief is not essentially different from religious beliefs that we have inherited uh, from the uh, Christian uh, uh, tradition in particular. Therefore, the paragraph, as you remember, uh, um, famously begins with, we still haven't completely understood uh, uh, the consequences of the great event, the, the, the traumatic event called God is uh, uh, dead. And in particular, we are still not able to draw the consequences from uh, uh, this in our uh, uh, culture and our uh, uh, institutions. And immediately the next uh, example comes, because God is resurrected, in a sense, in the uh, privileged form of the uh, uh, arch belief of our time, which is the belief uh, uh, in the uh, uh, truth of science. But behind this, and uh, the absolute truth of science, uh, but behind this, uh, um, behind this uh, um, uh, constatation, uh, he suggests, I am uh, broadly commenting the text that you uh, uh, know, there is something, of course, deeper, uh, deeper, which for that reason, in a sense, uh, ought to be considered as the root the inner root, the intimate uh, 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 root for that uh, uh, continuous demand of religiosity, which is the will to truth. Uh, now, I will not uh, discuss uh, everything there. Uh, will, of course, is difficult and important. Uh, <coughs> uh, we know that uh, followers of Nietzsche have uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, partially equivalent uh, uh, formulations for that. And they are not totally identical. Of course, instead of will, you could speak of desire, uh, or you could speak of uh, uh, demand, and so on, and, and, and so on. But the important uh, point, of course, has to do with uh, uh, the fact that at the root or the intimate core of the demand or the desire for truth in some objective form or some form that can be externalized or projected in uh, um, uh, uh, discourses and systems is something that is deeply intimate and psychological. Therefore, behind the desire for truth is the desire for certainty. Now, if you uh, um, uh, read uh, or for, I would say, uh, uh, a relationship to truth that uh, uh, is constitutive of uh, um, uh, uh, the continuity and, and and the cognitus, I'm tempted to say, on the subject. Now, if you read that, you, 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 and, and you start thinking about it, you, you get, you can get, perhaps, uh, especially in the contemporary context, to the idea that, uh, and he would not deny that, that Nietzsche's description um, of the religiosity of the category truth 
is completely and purely Christian uh, in a sense. And this is not something that he uh, does deny. So in a sense, he's repeating in his own language the famous uh, Augustinian, uh, <laughs> Augustinian uh, motto at the heart of the Confessions, uh, superior summo meo, interior intimo meo. Uh, the truth that is absolute and that uh, therefore uh, is above any of us, and that is also, this is an important point of course, to be shared by all the members uh, of the community, possibly uh, uh, humankind as, uh, uh, as such, is not something that we will acquire or uh, have a relation uh, uh, with which is only external, it's something that in the end we must find in the most intimate part of our own uh, uh, thought or perhaps even our uh, uh, unconscious. Now this leads to the question, of course, and then um, has with uh, uh, that, uh, how to, I wouldn't say how to relativize, but how to determine, to understand the, 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 the determination of this uh, uh, representation of the uh, essential relationship of uh, 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 religion with truth. And uh, here I find it especially uh, useful, of course, to uh, borrow, even with care and precautions, uh, uh, the suggestion that has been recently uh, uh, made by Jan Asman in his uh, uh, work, in his revision of uh, Freud's hypothesis concerning the origins of monotheism. So, as you probably know, Asman uh, published uh, several successive books. He's an Egypt Egyptologist. The first was called Moses the Egyptian. It essentially explained that Freud basically had been right in his uh, uh, interpretation of the origins of monotheism as something brought to the Jewish people uh, uh, by an Egyptian priest or in any case somebody influenced by the revolution, the religious revolution in the history of Egypt and uh, uh, Akhenaton's uh, uh, revolution. And uh, um, then he uh, uh, published, uh, he was severely, severely criticized and published a second uh, a series of other books, particularly one which is called, uh, I'm not sure about the, uh, I think in English it's The Price of Monotheism. And it's, uh, uh, but in German it has a more uh, uh, um, uh, clearer title, which is Die Mosaische Unterscheidung, that is the, the difference or the division uh, uh, invented and produced by Moses. So here again I have to be extremely, extremely quick, etc. But essentially what uh, the interest of uh, Asman's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, hypothesis or Asman's, Asman's uh, 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 idea is that he, uh, explanation of the absolute and the intimate or the subjective, is something that was introduced, in fact, as a revolutionary change in the history of the religious discourse or religious representations that pre existed and therefore led to an extremely violent break, uh, leading some religions that he calls in German Gegenreligionen, that is counter-religions, and because they define themselves uh, uh, in terms of their radical opposition with anything else that had been considered religious uh, 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 before, uh, 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 in terms, why that? In terms of a specific relationship to truth. Uh, and the specific relationship to truth is presented by Asman in the following manner. Up to uh, that uh, uh, revolution in Egypt and then in the, in, uh, in the, in the Jewish history and then all the monotheisms uh, arise from uh, uh, there, uh, the category true and false had no function in the religious discourse. So you couldn't say that uh, the myth is true or is false, this is not uh, uh, relevant. You could not even say that uh, one religious discourse and community possesses the truth, whereas all the others are in the error. Whereas at this moment, of course, this becomes not only possible, but the core of the self-recognition uh, 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 of the uh, uh, religious discourse. And of course, is not uh, uh, at great pains to uh, uh, show that uh, uh, as a continuation, of course, another important category will emerge, which is the category of heresy, uh, 
which is the category of uh, uh, the, the error or the falsity, the, the, the essential mistake that is not only located outside but risks being located inside the reduced discourse itself. Now, I could continue on that and uh, that would be a fascinating uh, uh, um, uh, object, but I will only uh, uh, add one remark, at, uh, or two remarks at this point. Uh, maybe I'll never reach here. Um, uh, two remarks I, I, will, I will add are the following. Um, of course, such a, a, a representation, uh, an intimate articulation of the true and the religious or the uh, um, or, or piety, um, uh, leads to a notion of uh, uh, orthodoxy, I mean, the position between orthodoxy and uh, uh, heresies or uh, 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 religious deviations, if you like. But it also uh, very strongly leads to the idea that the orthodoxy as such cannot be formulated. Uh, therefore, there's an intrinsic uh, uh, tendency that is probably, uh, lies probably at the core of the monotheistic tradition <coughs> towards so-called ne negative theology. Uh, and of course, negative theology is stronger in some monotheisms than in others. In Islam, it is almost foundational. Uh, whereas, of course, in Christianity, it is, uh, uh, I would not say, <laughs> bad Judaism. Uh, uh, in Christianity, it's a matter of uh, permanent uh, dispute, which uh, probably has to do with the fact that uh, the uh, formulation of the truth or the dogma, and especially the unity, the oneness of the truth in uh, 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 the Christian tradition, is politically overdetermined, which will take us uh, in, a, in, a, in a different uh, uh, manner. So that leads to uh, uh, the idea that the uh, uh, only possible enunciation of the truth is a tautological enunciation. And the type of the tautological enunciation is God is God. God is God. There are very remarkable developments on the violence of this formula in some uh, others that I could uh, uh, quote to you. But then that leads to a second consideration, which is uh, uh, now we've come to the extreme of one possibility, and we are in great uh, danger or risk of uh, assuming that this is the only way in which truth and the religious can be uh, intimately associated. And of course, it's not the case. So we must look for other uh, antithetic examples, I would say, of modalities of enunciating the truth from a religious point of view, or sites, places, practices within which the uh, enunciation of the truth is also uh, 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 crucial. And of course, we have no time for that. But prophecy, divination, uh, oracles uh, uh, are all, of course, uh, uh, relevant examples for, from this point of view. Spinoza did an extraordinary job in explaining that the correlative of uh, 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 a believer's relationship to uh, uh, truth in the modality of prophecy, and I think we could explain that to oracles and divination, doesn't have to do with intimate certainty, uh, but it has to do with the encounter with science, uh, the encounter with uh, uh, circumstances which uh, 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 can be uh, um, uh, explained or eliminated in terms of the intervention of the divine in everyday uh, uh, life. And the, the fundamental characteristic of that intervention is, of course, uncertainty or equivocity. So in a sense, we are exactly at the opposite, uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, opposite pole uh, uh, with respect uh, uh, to the uh, 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 monotheistic uh, uh, form. But that doesn't mean that the question of truth is uh, uh, ever to be eliminated. Now, I think I no longer have more than five minutes. Huh? Now it's about time. Uh, it's about time. OK, so, so it's about time, so I will the one thing I wanted to say about the uh, uh, authority, and this has been beautifully uh, uh, engaged or uh, initiated by uh, some people here in their presentations yesterday, Luke Collison and Austin, because they immediately uh, uh, referred to the fact that, uh, that uh, Authority is a, is a very equivocal category. So I completely admit that the problems of translation are impossible to overcome. But the reason why I nevertheless chose that, uh, uh, that uh, term is I thought 
that I could share, that I will really uh, limit that to one point. I thought that under the category authority, I could uh, take together, again, two poems, uh, two poems, which I believe are uh, 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 permanently present in the theological political debate. This is all about the theological political debate. That is the fact that the religious institution cannot be separated, but also cannot be completely from, but also cannot be totally or fully identified with the so-called secular, uh, imperial, or civic, or uh, 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 statist uh, uh, institution. And the ambiguity or the antinomy we have to do here uh, uh, has to do with the fact that uh, 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 there are two uh, uh, terms or two ideas always simultaneously present. One of them is power, uh, or you might even say sovereignty, uh, something like uh, overwhelming power or uh, um, uh, 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 absolute power. And the other one is law. Uh, and law and, uh, and power, of course, are intimately linked, but the question whether law comes before power, or power comes before law and creates law, so, 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 so to speak, again, perhaps this is heavily influenced by our Western tradition, is a question that is never uh, uh, resolved, just as equally important, I believe, the question of the kind of subjective effects are to be produced because there is something like authority, that is power and or law, to which we uh, 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 relate, which is incarnated or, or, or uh, uh, in uh, uh, institutions, but beyond, in fact, our capacity to change institutions or to create them uh, ourselves. And here again, I believe there is an ambiguity uh, which has to do with, I follow Spinoza's sense of Spinoza and Hobbes, uh, we have two categories. And the more I think about it, the more I am tempted to say that they are not, they can never completely identify. So one of them clearly is obedience, and that's relatively, or submission. This is relatively key, submission to the law, or submission to the power that inspires uh, the law, or that derives from uh, uh, the law, in as much as it cannot be humanly disputed. The only thing you can do is appropriate the idea of that power and become, as they were beautifully explained, a revolutionary who uses the idea of the absolute power against the existing uh, uh, power. But then there is something else, which is not exactly obedience a submission, even if it's mixed. So I looked for a word for that, and I, I thought that perhaps in English the best word is Hobbes's old uh, word, all. Uh, it's something like all. Uh, that you retrieve in, of course, Kant's idea of uh, the, sublime, the sublime and the respect uh, uh, for the uh, uh, inhuman and absolute character of the, of the law. So I, I do not say that this is purely religious. Uh, but I said that religion is, uh, 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 among other things, uh, uh, fundamentally uh, uh, busy with uh, uh, discussing this antinomy. And finally, and I will stop there, I think that the problem of life is, uh, is, uh, is the third great problem. Now, instead of life, I should perhaps, uh, should perhaps say modes of life, uh, modes of life, and particularly ways of organizing and uh, symbolically uh, determine uh, our modes of life, and I would intentionally borrow and expand Agamben's category in terms of uses of our bodies. And I take it very quickly that the uses of our thoughts uh, are also in some sense uses of our bodies, especially if they present themselves as taking uh, as much distance as possible in an ascetic uh, 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 manner if you like. So this is of absolutely uh, uh, essential permanent uh, uh, relevance today. Uh, we are tempted to think that uh, conflicts uh, in the West, especially about the Islamic veil, uh, uh, all the uh, <coughs> dietary interdictions uh, are uh, uh, something that uh, represents a conflict between modernity and, uh, and the past. We are forgetting, or 
perhaps rather increasingly becoming aware that this is not the past, this is the present and even more the future. I mean, the dietary interdictions in particular are a fascinating uh, question. They're not working in the same way in every uh, religious tradition. The big differences, fascinating differences from this point of view between the Hinduist uh, uh, tradition and the Islamic uh, or Jewish Islamic tradition, even if the West had a tendency to see all that as uh, somewhat, uh, sorry. One minute, one yeah. minute, one okay. Question. So, uh, but, uh, but of course this is our future. Uh, this is our present and our future. Veganism is a religion, and I don't say that this is this in a critical, uh, deep, uh, deep, depressing uh, uh, sense. But, <laughs> but of course we find that, is the problem that Agamben uh, uh, beautifully uh, uh, asked, namely the problem of the difference between animality and humanity, or Zoe and Bios, and the two diff very different relationships to death that are involved in uh, an, an, a natural concept of, of life and a cultural or symbolic concept of, of life. And of course, again, I don't say that religion is the only uh, religious discourse the only way to address uh, uh, such issues, but well, it's very difficult to find one. Uh, it's an ethical discourse, but it always has some oblique relationship to religion. But in any case, religion is essentially a way of articulating these uh, uh, issues. Now, I don't know how to reconcile the three uh, uh, perspectives, only by saying something like the subject, if there is something like the religious subject, is this. individual or collective that tries to cope simultaneously with truth, with authority, and with modes of life. Sorry for the next. Well, first of all, thank you for your uh, talk. It was uh, really interesting. I have um, a question. Well, it's a couple of questions, but I think they're related to each other. So um, I'm f I find it really interesting, these uh, three ideas related to the concept of, of religion. But I think that in such context or something like that can be like this idea of truth is also a kind of really um, religiocentric point of view in the sense of the Western you know, Christianity or monotheistic point of view, because I was thinking, how this kind of definition with truth, authority, and differences in life, or, or whatever, can be also useful to understand religious without like a dogmatic or without dogma, not without dogma, in the sense of dogma. there are not like normative um, beliefs or something like that. That's not too difficult. I, I, I had to be very quick, but when I came to the idea that, uh, in a sense, uh, the uh, uh, core uh, intention, uh, so to speak, in a more or less objective uh, sense of te teleological orientation of monotheism in the Western sense, and that includes Islam, uh -huh. leads towards negative theology. It leads to the uh, absence of a dogma. It leads to the reduction of the dogma to uh, um, uh, uh, a formula <coughs> that, <coughs> that is Enigmatic itself. So the consequence being that as soon as you try and develop uh, uh, a dogmatic discourse, uh, you produce something like a heresy. And uh, uh, of course, I have a reference in mind, Anna. If you say, oh, your references are so narrow and you're so completely embedded in the uh, uh, tradition, I will completely uh, grant that to you. But my main reference here is Pascal, the French mystic, you know, and others who could, because the, his core idea, very well ex expressed in the uh, essay on uh, grace, is that uh, since the, the core of the uh, Christian dogma is a unity of opposites, uh, the human that is divine, or, or the divine that is uh, human, the predestination that is freedom, and, 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 and conversely, um, as soon as you start explaining, justifying, founding, developing the consequences of the dogma, 
you fall into one or another form of uh, uh, heretic uh, uh, discourse. And therefore, the only orthodoxy is the one that says nothing. Uh, but then the consequence of that, which is very radical, is of course uh, you cannot avoid saying something. And therefore, you cannot avoid choosing in this or that circumstance. That's not a theological de decision. It's a political decision in every, in every case, because people follow one interpretation of the other. So I <coughs> agree with you that there is big difficulty there. But it's not perhaps uh, um, uh, totally uh, uh, insurmountable. Thank you very much for the question. Any other questions? Um, Matt. Uh, early on, you said something about this kind of ambivalent distinction between religion and culture. So yes. it must not yes. be identified, must not be separate. Yes. And you effectively repeated the same schema when talking about authority, saying religion cannot be identified with the state, can also not be separated from it. Are these related to the problematics, or how do you articulate uh, them? Good point. Good point. Uh, I. I'm increasingly uh, uh, retreating from my uh, discourse on the distinction between the religious and the cultural uh, as I uh, proposed it. Uh, I don't say everything I said was absurd, but, uh, but uh, or, or if you prefer, I'm concentrating on the idea that uh, 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 the religious is a uh, not surprise that there's nothing about it. It's a kind of structuralist legacy. In, you know, the, 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 the religious is a, is, a, is a specific way of dealing with the uh, uh, nature uh, uh, culture difference. So if you, if you and I, I, I'm certainly very, I come back to the authority. I've been very influenced uh, in this respect in reading recently, I'm sorry this is mainly in French, but uh, I'm sure the equivalent exists in, uh, in, uh, um, in other languages very interesting uh, uh, interpretations of the function of dietary interdictions in, uh, uh, in the Islamic tradition, precisely, which uh, uh, very strongly insist on the uh, uh, idea that if religion is needed, this is to tame animality. Uh, in, but to tame animality, of course, is, uh, there's no such thing as animality per se, so you have to invent the forms of animality that you want to claim. And therefore, it's to produce a cultural or symbolic uh, 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 reorganization of the, uh, say, natural side of our uh, uh, lives. And I find this uh, uh, rather convincing. And at the same time, uh, um, uh, of course, so, so the disciplinary element, of course, becomes very important. And, uh, and I cannot help uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, establishing uh, bridges with what uh, David Strauss and others uh, explain